Good day for friends. Uh, today is new project day. Um, and I have a nice acoustic in today. Now, I'm going to show it you first. Dreadnought, cut away, and it's a Tanglewood. I quite like Tanglewood guitars. Now, I used to sell Tanglewood guitars a few years ago. And darn fine guitars they are. Tanglewood are a British company. I'm not sure exactly where they're based, but they're a British company, but they were they have guitars made out in Asia. And I know for a fact the Korea made ones, which were some fantastic guitars, were made at the Cork factory out in Korea, South Korea. Um, the later ones, this one for instance, is made in China. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing because they're made under strict conditions, but I must admit that I do have a soft spot for made in Korea Tanglewoods, but that, that not dissuade us. So, this is not brand new, it is a used guitar. I can already see from under the lacquer there, there's a little nick under the lacquer. I don't know if you can see it, I'll try show you where it is. It's just above my finger, there. Um, and I know certain sellers on eBay get these uh, and they're, they're, they're franchised to Tanglewood, so they have to take a certain amount a month. And I know that they get them and they get a lot of the seconds and they get them really, really cheaply. In fact, I know they get them for £75 and we stick them on eBay and we sell for what we sell for. And this could well be one of those. I'm not saying it is. But anyway, I know what the owner paid for this guitar and he didn't pay he didn't pay above £200 with a hard case, which is very, very reasonable. But the guitar does have issues. Um, looking at it straight away, I can tell the action is too high. Now that's easily rectified because I'm able to... I'll be able to shave off some of, something at the bottom of this saddle. I'll take about a millimetre off, drop, drop the action a little bit. But also, this guitar does have some high frets. And unfortunately, unfortunately it has six at least, six high frets at least. Um, I was also not able to alter the truss rod under string tension because I got the impression that we was right up on the adjuster and we can't move it anymore. So I'm going to have a look at that and rectify that. So what I shall do is, oh, there's also, there's also a rattle coming from inside of the guitar. I imagine it is one of the um, wires from the, um, you will have, you've got an EQ system on there. And the wires are hanging about inside the guitar and they should be uh, taped up to somewhere inside the body to stop them rattling about. But when we pluck a note, we are getting a buzz and I did notice that it is coming from inside of the guitar. And I would suggest that it is one of the wires inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some good Scotch 3M tape and I'm going to make sure we've got all the wires taped back. I may, might even add a dog of glue. Um, another thing we are going to do with this guitar, it, the knot is cut for 10 gauge strings. We're going to go with 11 gauge, so I'm going to recut the knot, reshape it. So this guitar is basically having the works. It's having a complete fret level. Um, I could turn, in fact, I think I will turn the camera around right now and I can show you where we are with the frets. Uh, I actually did appraise the guitar while the owner was here. It's a new client. Again, someone else from Facebook. Uh, I've spoken to him quite a few times over the last couple of years. I don't, I didn't really, I'd not really met the guy until he came and bought his guitar in on Monday. Right, I do have a fret rocker type thing knocking about. What have I done with it? It's right where it needs to be, look, right in front of me. So hopefully you're going to be able to hear these frets are rocking. Again, uh, four different lengths, perfectly milled flats. We're able to check three frets at a time. If we get a rock, we know the one in the middle is high. And this one should be high. There you go. With a shorter length, always doing three frets at a time. Another high one, it's two, another high one, quite very high, three, another one, four, five. Very high, this one, six. So I have six really quite high frets. Now the thing is when I alter one fret, it's gonna alter the other two in relation to it, either to either side, are probably gonna interact with each other. 
If I'd lower that down, chances are this middle one's going to be high again. So rather than do them individually, normally I like to do four. I can do four with a flat file, possibly five at a push. But when, once we get to uh, five or more, it's a case of strings off, guitar on the neck jig, uh, and we're going to remove the knot and we're going to actually level the whole lot. While the strings are off, I'll also remove a millimetre off the bottom of the saddle. Um, I'm going to have to remove the nut. Uh, but basically we're going to get it all jigged up, get the neck sort of, uh, supported underneath and I'll go across with a flat bar which is milled perfectly flat with two grits of paper, 240 grit followed by 400 grit. Once I've got all the frets level with each other then I will have to recrown and polish the frets. It's around about a five hour job uh, when all said and done but it is not that difficult. So that is exactly what I am going to do. I'm not going to do it today because I have other things planned for today. There's no rush on this. So Phil will be really happy to get this back by the end of next week, I would imagine. Um, so that what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this one, I'll get this one on the jig um, probably at some time tomorrow, so I'll come back with an update then. Right, now we have the guitar on the neck jig. We have levelled the, the neck, we're making sure the fingerboard, the neck is straight. You can see there that it is straight and level. So what I need to do now is I need to cover the fingerboard with various bits of masking tape just so I don't get any crap on the um, into the wood there. So what I do is three different sizes. Normally go with one inch from fret seven and inside. I believe is that one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, fret seven. Just inside fret 7 there. Take everything off. I always put a strip underneath so I can peel this off easier later. And there you go. And this is just to keep the fingerboard clean. I'm going to do the whole fingerboard. I'll go with different widths there and there until we've got the whole fingerboard done. So I'll come back once we're done. And um, in fact, I'll, do, I'll see what I'll do now. I'll go across with a fret rocker. Right now. So, I did say, when we, before we got the uh, neck straight, I did say there was six high frets. There are actually nine. Uh, not nine, ten. And I'm going to go across with the fret rocker. This is fine, there you go. Hear that? All the way across. Next one's fine. So we've got one. Next one is high. Two. Push all the way across. Next one. Middle's fine. That's three. Next one seems fine. Next one is high. Four. Next one high, that's five. Here's another one. Six. Next one's fine. There you go. Seven. Next one's high as well. Very high. Eight. Next one. Nine. This one's also high. Listen. Ten. Next one's okay. And the last one's next to last one's high. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven high frets. I'm going to go across with a leveling beam. Uh, I've recently put new sandpaper on this. Um, first I will go off with a coarse 240 grit to level them off and I'll go with a smoother 400 grit to smooth out the scratches in there. First I'm going to get all taped up like I said and then I'm going to crack on with the leveling. So just finishing off the fret leveling I've um, leveled with the 240 grit. Uh, took off most of the material I need to remove from there. I'm just going to finish off with a 400 grit now, just smooth it all off and make it easy to crown and polish later on. And just a few strokes should do this. 
all I'm doing is following the contour or the radius of the neck. And that's it, we're done. Uh, the frets are now all level, they're all silver on top. Um, and I can move on to getting them crammed and polished. In fact, I might as well show that they're all level when I go across with the fret rocker. Shouldn't be any rock anywhere now. seen most of this. I know my hands are a little bit in the way but it can't be helped. So we're all good. Uh, I can actually remove this now from the um, jig. Easy to crown on the other bench. all of these frets here and that's it we're level everywhere um, the frets are now all flat now what we'll I do is now the frets are flat looking this way at the cross section we need to make this into a nice D shape or a semicircular shape on the edge of the bevel so where the flat, fret, frets are flat that way now we need to put that curve back in across the whole fret so we're looking at putting that crown back in uh, I'll be doing that with hand files uh, like I say I'll do that on the other table and um, I'll show you some of that shortly. Right, I'm just about to start um, crowning the frets. So I'm going to show you just a couple quickly. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a three-sided file, three-edge file. It's got three ground edges flat, so it's not going to cut into the fingerboard. All I'm going to do is, where this, flat, uh, this fret is flat across that way, so it's flat all the way across, flat there, I'm going to put the crown back in. And what I'm going to use is a three-edge file, like I say, three-sided file. And I'm just going to go across and as I go across I'm going to roll over, roll over, roll over, roll over till I get a thin line. You see I've got marker pen on all of the frets. And just to get a thin line over the top and I'm looking for about a third of a millimetre and that's going to be the contact point between the fret and the string. We want it not uber thin but we don't want it thick, we want it quite thin. And some of these might not have a lot of material to remove because I've not removed any great height off the top of the fret. Once that's done, I'll go across with a two and a half mil crowning file. You see it's got a, a crown in there. It's shaped same as a fret. And I'm just going to finish it off just by recrowning it. Now I don't know if you can see, but I've got a really thin line, probably no more than a third of a millimetre, probably even less than that, quarter of a millimetre, point two, or a fifth of a millimetre, right down the centre of that fret. I'm going to do it for all 19 frets, or however many there are. Um, every time I use the file, I give it a wipe and a clean, and I'll move on to the next one. Nice and simple. Not a major job, this. Uh, the time of this job goes into polishing the frets because we're going to go across with five different grits of sandpaper to get a nice good polish, get all the scratches out, get a nice polish on there. There you go, nice thin line. Clean the crowning file. Just a couple of strokes. And there are two done. Um, nice quick ones, these ones. Once you get further up the fingerboard, uh, we get a little bit more difficult when we're working over the body. I'll show you where I mean. Once we get up to this end, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because, like I said, I've got to work across over the guitar. So, what we'll do is. So, that's as much as I can angle it. So, what I'll do is I'll turn the guitar around and do this side. I can get at the far side easy enough the near side not so well. So what I'll do is I'll turn the guitar 380 degrees and I'll be able to get it the other side as well. That's not 
so bad. Again, wipe clean. I can get at the far side easily. Once you get to the near side, I'm going to have to come that way. So it's easier for me to turn the guitar around. Rather, I mean, I could do this, but that is not, really is not ideal. Uh, doing it this way. Same on that. Not so bad. So anyway, I'm going to crack on, get all these frets uh, recrowned, and we can move on to the polishing. Welcome back guys. Right, so here we are with the um, frets finished. Uh, all highly polished. I think you'll agree that they look absolutely fantastic. I've just put some mineral oil on the neck. Other jobs I have done, I have rerouted the uh, pickup wire and the EQ tuner wire. I've banded it all up using um, insulating tape so it's all out of the way. We shouldn't we won't be getting any rattle in. It's not hanging about a lot. You'll get no rattle anymore, there won't be any buzz now when you pluck a string. Um, I've even had the EQ out, checked everything was tight and they need a little bit of adjustment to get everything bang on again. So all that remains for me to do now is to put the nut back on and replace the saddle. Just have a look at those frets, let me just hold you there. What do you think of that? These frets are all absolutely level, they're highly polished, I've been with five grits of sandpaper. Um, 800, was it 5 or 6? I didn't use 800. Uh, 1,200, 1,500, 2,000 and 2,500. Finished off with finest grade super fine steel wool. All highly polished. I did have the neck completely taped up so we didn't get any scratches on the fingerboard anywhere. Um, you guys frets are absolutely beautiful. I pride myself on my fret work. Uh, I really, really do. It's what I'm cut out to do. Fantastic. So that's all now ready. So that'll have that problem sorted out. We have a very high action above the 12th fret. And there's a saddle, and I know the saddle sticks a lot out from the bridge. Now if I really wanted to, I could shave some off the height off this bridge, but I don't need to yet, so I'm not going to touch the bridge. It's always good to leave the bridge if you can do, but I can still afford to remove about one to one and a half millimetres of material from the bottom of this saddle, which I will do. I'm going to remove, just going to remove one millimetre, which should give us a nice action above the 12th fret, probably about two and a half millimetres, which will be fine. It's probably running at about three millimetres at the moment. So if I take one millimetre off here, well, the 12th fret is halfway between this, the saddle, and the nut, so it should drop it at least a millimetre in the middle. It'll get us a nice low action on this, currently over three millimetres. So any, anywhere coming around to around two and a half, two and a quarter will be fine. So I'm going to take an even one millimetre across the whole bottom of this saddle. It could be that way as you look at it. Um, and that will be absolutely fine. Once that's done, I can get the nut back on, get the strings on, and then I can start to reshape the nut. This guitar is going to be absolutely fabulous once it's done. Uh, it will be ready, well, I'll be ready by the beginning of the week or beginning of the next week. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to crack on with that. Uh, you'll notice again, I've gone back to wearing latex gloves. It just makes my job a lot easier. I've had some yucky guitars in lately, and I said to my missus, you know what? I really should be wearing latex gloves again. I used to wear, as you get the black ones, I could have got black ones today, but I thought the blue ones look pretty nice, look quite clinical, don't they? So I've got to got the blue ones. It's six quid for a hundred, so 50 pairs, six quid, not too bad. About 12 pence each, aren't they? So that's that, so I'm going to crack on, I'm going to get this done. Um, I will come back and show you. Oh, just before I do go, things we're going on with, we have a custom light set by Martin & Co. M535 Phosphor Bronze, gauge 11 to 52. 1152 is quite a light set, really, custom lights. So there you go, that's where we're going to be with that. Welcome back, front friends, and here's the guitar all finished. And to recap, uh, let's tell you the model number. It is a Tanglewood Nashville V or Nashville 5, model number TM5 DCE. A British company, Tanglewood. The guitar has had a complete fret level. I've lowered the action by removing 1.5mm from below the saddle. The action is 2.5mm above the 12th fret. I've recut the nut for the wider strings, so we're going with 1152 gauge. And I've rerouted all the wiring inside to stop it rattling. And I've reset the EQ and the tuner. 
The guitar is really nice to play now. I'll leave the privilege of playing it to the owner who is on his way right now. That's why I've just had to rush this part of the video. But that is it until the next project. So, Fret Friends, as always, keep checking out the website, fretfriend.co.uk or go to facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. That's facebook.com forward slash N-G-1-7. And until the next time, be good to each other and I will see you soon.